Hello, I am Dr. Chris Osmussen, and I am here with uh, Kristen Tyndall, who is Mojave's assistant principal. And we are changing up coffee with the principal. This is the first time that we are recording it. We have not recorded it in the past because we've had parents part of the Zoom call. So we are um, just gonna record. We hope that you enjoy this presentation on Arizona state testing. And we will see how this format goes for our community. And if it goes well, then we will continue to record the coffee with the principal on a monthly basis. Um, giving more families access to the information. So today we're going to talk about state testing and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, take us through this agenda. So um, in the spring each year, Arizona will um, conduct state testing. Way back in the day when this started, back in about 2001, 2002, we had something called the Arizona Instrument to Measure Standards, and it was known as the AIMS test. Um, that morphed itself into a new name of Arizona Merits, which quickly became AZM2, standing for Arizona Merits sort of version 2.0. And now the state has renamed the assessment to the Arizona's Academic Standards Assessment, also known as ASSA. So a lot of these names and terminologies and acronyms are um, interchangeable, and it can get confusing for our families, but our students now take the Arizona's Academic Standards Assessment, also known as ASSA. And what these state assessments are measuring is your students' progress towards academic standards. So in the state of Arizona at the Department of Education, there is a listing, and I'm in a moment I'm gonna share my screen for both of these things, of each grade level standards. And there are standards for mathematics, for language arts, for social studies, for science, for fine arts, for PE, all of the different subject matters um, that we teach here at school, there are Arizona state standards that we teach too. And these are things that students are supposed to know and be able to do at the end of that year. So there are eighth grade standards. And during the eighth grade year, we're working on those standards. And by the time that we get to the end of the academic year, our students should know that content and should be able to perform those skills. Likewise in sixth grade and seventh grade. If you wanna check that out, go to the Arizona Department of Education's website. And it is right smack dab in the middle of the, um, of the page. And you'll be able to link onto the academic standards. Now, when we take the assessment, it's measuring whether students are highly proficient, meaning that they're performing well above expectations. If they are proficient, so they're meeting the state's expectations. So if a student scores proficient or highly proficient, they have passed the Arizona's assessment for academic standards. Students might fall slightly below the expectations and they are classified as partially proficient. And then students that are performing much lower than what would be expected at their grade level, then they are classified as minimally proficient. And this is the data that parents really want to know. Are their students progressing through the grade levels as expected by the Arizona Department of Education, which means that the Scottsdale Unified School District has those expectations. And then each of our classroom teachers are teaching directly to those standards and they have those expectations. The assessment is also gonna provide some information to Mojave and to our overall community. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is how many of our students are passing the test. And then the second thing that we look at, that parents really don't have a lot of access to this information, but schools do, our district does, and we utilize this information to monitor and adjust our teaching practices. And that's the growth information. So the way that the state is gonna measure how well our students are growing is that all of the students last time we took the test that scored the same raw score. So perhaps in English language arts, in sixth grade, all of our, you know, our students each had their own individual scores. And let's say that Ms. Tyndall and I were both sixth graders last year, and we both scored 1,012 
on the assessment. Our raw score was identical of 1,012. Well, this year, when we take the test, they're going to compare Ms. Tyndall's scores to my scores and to the scores of every student who scored last year 1,012 points. And then they're gonna measure which students showed low growth, average growth, high growth, and then from there, they can take the aggregate information and determine how well our students grew as compared to all students across the state. The growth score is as important to the schools as the percent passing rate. And then that data, both of those pieces of information and other data, like how many of our students have passed um, the Azela testing and are becoming proficient. They started this year as an English language learner, and now they're becoming more proficient in the English language. So there's other data that is woven into the overall school letter grade, and the school letter grades then create the district letter grade. Mojave is a B school, and we're hoping to improve that as time goes on. So how has Mojave and Scottsdale Unified School District done on the state assessments in the past couple of years? I'm gonna stop sharing this screen and I'm gonna take an opportunity to share a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna look at is um, you can see this scatter plot. The first thing that it's showing is percent of students that are passing. And this was in 2019, right in the heat uh, or just before our pandemic. And you can see that Mojave is right here in the middle. So it's showing that we had about just under 60% of our students were passing the language arts assessment. And we were showing average growth of our students. So. Ideally, we would like to be up in this upper corner of the upper right-hand side where lots of our students are passing the test and they're showing high growth. Our school fell right smack dab in the middle. Now, when we compare 2019 to 2020, watch how all of these dots shifted to the lower left-hand side. So you can see what's happening is 2019, 2020, and we had lower percentages of students that were passing the test, and we were showing lower growth. Now, that's not unexpected because we just went through a pandemic, but you can see this trend is taking place for all of Scottsdale, and the trend is taking place for all of the state of Arizona. When we look at our math scores, you know, once again, you can see Mojave was showing average growth, and we had about 50% of our students were passing that assessment. When we compare 2019 to 2021, you can see that shift is happening once again. And we, we went from about the middle to um, our percentage rates didn't fall that much, but our growth rates did fall. So once again, you can see the trend that was happening inside our district. Another thing that we look at in schools is the amount of students that are um, in high socioeconomic need. There is a belief that if there are students that have high economic needs that are living in poverty, that they perform um, lower on these state assessments. So one thing that we do is we look at this line of socioeconomic status and we see how our students are performing. And I just happened to choose the eighth grade math percenting rate, uh, per percent passage rates from 2021. And you can see that Mojave falls right on the expected line. What we're working to do is to get that, um, our goal, our scores up above that line so we can show that we are working with all students, no matter their socioeconomic status, and making sure that they are meeting success on these statewide assessments. Let's go back to the um, to the the agenda, if you will. So, how has we performed in the last couple of years? Oops, I'm not sharing. Let me go back to do that correctly. <laughs> I have to love technology. Now I'm sharing, and I'll get back to that screen. There we go. So um, you can see that we've had a shift where um, the pandemic did impact academic achievement. 
And so we've been working hard at Mojave, specifically designing our information or designing our lessons to the state standards. Now, what we do is we follow a curriculum map. So you can go to Scottsdale Unified School District, to susd.org. You can click on academics at the top banner. From there, you click on curriculum, and then you can see our curriculum maps. Now, this is going to show you what teachers should be teaching like in the first quarter or the second quarter or the third quarter, how many days they should spend on a specific skill or a specific standard. And then perhaps some ways that they would approach teaching to the state standards following the curriculum map. The curriculum map is very important because we don't wanna spend all of our time on one standard because there are so many standards to cover inside of an academic year. So the curriculum map helps the teachers stay on focus, on point, and making sure that they're covering all of the standards over the course of the whole year. Now, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? Because the school year is actually over on May 25th, but we will be proctoring these assessments in April. So please understand that we don't have the full academic year to teach a full year's worth of instruction. All right. So you, um, well, you can click on the curriculum maps. You're gonna to wanna to find them specifically um, to uh, middle schools, grades six through eight. I wanna also share with you that what we've been working on as we are preparing our students for the Arizona uh, uh, Academics uh, um, Standards Assessment, the ASSA assessment, is that one, we're using uh, the iReady Math program. And so this is helping students with one, filling gaps and holes from what they um, had missed in prior years. And it's also giving them additional practice um, with working on grade level standards. And so by having fidelity and using iReady, these, this is a great way for us to tackle math. And then the other thing that we're doing for language arts is we're writing across the curriculum. You can ask your students about supporting their claims with evidence and reasoning. And as a middle school student, I would hope that they would take a sigh. Oh, I do that in all of my classes is what we would hope that they would respond to. So how are we doing? So we're monitoring our progress. First off, we took some benchmark assessments in mathematics back in the fall, and we just completed some winter benchmark um, assessments. And you can see that our students are showing growth. So as an example, in sixth grade, back in the fall, when we first came back in August, we assessed our students and only 32% of those students were performing at grade level. We have risen that up to 46% of our students. So we are 14% of our students doing a better job of meeting on grade level work in the area of mathematics in sixth grade. You can see in seventh grade, our math students are showing progress of a gain of 11%, and our eighth graders are showing a gain of 9%. English language arts, our benchmark assessments are not as, um, as helpful for us because they actually test different standards in the winter, in the fall, and, uh, and in the winter. So we're actually just comparing our winter data and we're, so when we compare sixth grade from 2020, 2021, we want to look at seventh grade of 2021, 2022, because those are the same students. That is the same cohort of students. And you can see that in the sixth grade year, we showed some progress there of rising from 32% of our students passing our benchmark assessments to now 46% of our students are passing our benchmark. And then you can see our seventh grade from last year, how they're performing as eighth graders. This year. we're seeing some improvement. We've got some work to continue doing. We as a school are working as, like I said, writing across the curriculum. We want our students to be able to support a claim with evidence and reasoning. And why we are doing that is because on state assessments, particularly the writing assessment, Students need to be able to read informational text. They need to be able to respond to a prompt. They need to cite textual evidence that supports the claims that they are making. And then they have to explain how that evidence supports the claim. That's the reasoning part and the part that our students have the most difficulty with. And they finally, when they do write a response, it has to be cohesive, 
has to follow grammatical and organizational rules. What we did at Mojave is we've offered a pre-test in the fall back in August. We will offer a post-test to see how our students are doing as a predictor to see how our students will do on the assessments. Now, when it gets down to the actual nitty gritty and how are we going to test our students, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Tyndall, who is not only our assistant principal, but she is our testing coordinator. Ms. Tyndall, I turn it over to you. Thanks, Dr. A. Yep, testing is coming up. Um, students know when testing season's around the corner. Um, you see them getting ready, they're practicing in their classrooms, teachers are prepping them. What we're doing on our end is putting together the logistics of testing. This year for math and ELA for our ASA testing, writing needs to be completed first. That's going to be done on April 5th. Students were able to practice the writing tests already. The state gave a field test, which gave students the opportunity to practice the writing process, um, read a prompt with their excerpts, create a claim, find evidence to support their claim. Teachers said they did a fantastic job with this. They took it seriously. They went through the whole writing process. So students have been preparing for writing, which the official writing test will be on April 5th. And then um, every Tuesday, so April 5th starts writing, April 12th will be reading and math part one. It'll be a three hour block, um, just like writing although students have the entire day to finish a test. It's not timed. And then on April 19th, we'll do reading and math part two. Students have already been in their testing classrooms. They've gotten to know their testing teacher who they'll be testing um, with for the, for the ASA test. Our eighth graders will be testing for the Arizona science test on March 29th, and that will occur within the school day for periods one and two. What we ask students to do and what we ask for support at home, really making sure students' Chromebooks are charged. They charge them fully the night before. Um, our teachers help with updating Chromebooks so that when they come to test, Chromebooks are ready to go when they get on the state server. Um, students will need earbuds. They'll need to get their own pair of earbuds. We have some if students forget, but we, we, we have a lot of students who bring their own and that's great, that way they don't have to share. And we really ask that students arrive on time, testing for um, each test starts promptly at 8 a.m. So wanna make sure kids are in their testing room and their testing seat by 7.45 when the bell rings. And that's what I have for logistics, Dr. A. Well, thank you. And I, for the way, another way that our parents can really help us out is to stress the importance of the assessment for you at home. Remember, this test is designed to communicate to parents their students' progress toward the state standards. This is not a test that our students are going to get an A, a B, a C, or a D on that goes into their grade book. And students are very used to working for points. And so the meaningfulness to them is diminished when we don't assign a point value to the assessment. And part of that is because um, it's really measuring their um, formative assessment. How are they doing? We shouldn't, this is not a summative assessment for our students. And we're not gonna get the data back until mid June. And so it's hard for us to assess a student's grade, A, B, C, D, on state assessments because we don't have the data. And in addition, our teachers and the school are actually prohibited from taking a look at the assessment. And that's done because the state does not want us teaching directly to the test. And I don't want my teachers teaching directly to the test. I want my teachers teaching to the skills that are required for students to be successful on those assessments. And that's a mindset. So it's really important for our parents to share with their students that they want their students to do their very, very best, to take the test seriously, to try hard. So that way, when you get the data, either at the end of the summer or as we start the beginning of the new year, which is typically when parents get the data, that you know how your student has progressed. So a sixth grade family who has now risen into seventh grade, you know if your student mastered the skills that were needed in sixth grade 
to now have success in seventh grade. So Can I jump if, in really quickly, Dr. A? Please do. You mentioned the Arizona Department of Education website where you can easily find state testing. They do offer practice tests for students and families where families can go in together and you can work through both the writing, the reading and math sample tests together, which we do in classrooms, but helps prepare students at home as well. What a great thing for parents to do together to also suggest that the importance of these assessments. Uh, the other thing I also want to share with our families before we close out, one, thank you for watching this. Two, if you have questions or concerns about Arizona State testing or the progress that your child is making here at school, please do not hesitate to reach out to the school. You can reach either Ms. Tyndall or I directly. You can reach out to the counselors, the teachers directly. We truly have a home school team that we want to put together, and that involves you as families and, and parents. Please do not hesitate to reach out to us at any time. And then finally, if you have questions or concerns with regard to the state testing itself, you can reach out to Ms. Tyndall or me. And those are our announcements. I talked so much, my lights came off. There we go. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.